Ezekiel chapter number 10. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Now here we're going back to the cherubims again. They are throughout the Bible. In Genesis chapter 3, where the cherubim are set up, after Adam and Eve are gone from the garden, the revelation that when heavens open up, we know about these cherubim, we read about these cherubim, we know that Satan was a cherubim. We know all kinds of things about these cherubim, they show up and yet we do not know, do not have the birth certificate of Jesus Christ. We do not know what day he was born. We don't know who was in attendance thereof. So it shows that where God puts priority. Now the fact is, Jesus Christ, the birth and everything that was related to it was prophecy. is 100% fulfilled. It's an important thing, but the date is not. Why are these cherubim so important? Why do we read about them in Exodus and Leviticus? Because they are charged some way, somehow, to the throne of God. Seems like wherever these cherubim show up, there is God's throne. There is some kind of fire. Now, I'm going to assume here, you don't have to take whatever I'm going to take on this one. But when the high priest went in the Day of Atonement that one time in the year and went and put blood in that mercy seat, where the mercy seat is, where the cherubim are, above the Ark of the Covenant, what happened to that blood? No one was to go in there and clean. No one was to go in there but the high priest, but once a year for his sins and for the sins of the people. What happened? With scripture, with scripture, I'm going to assume, I assume some kind of fire came down. But here they are again, and a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, that's from chapter 9. The guy went out and marked everybody who was doing right. And said, go in between the wheels. There's those wheels again. Even under the cherub. And fill thy hand with coals of fire from between the cherubim, and scatter them over the city. And he went in, he went in in my sight. Isaiah 6 6 is a great verse with this one. As Isaiah speaks, he says, You know, I'm a man of unclean lips, among some people of unclean lips, and tongues were taken from a coal from this altar and placed upon his lips. So there is some kind of altar where God is, where the cherubim hide it. And this man is allowed to take a hot coal. Ezekiel is allowed to have the hot coal put to his lips, and yet they're not burned. And yet the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Do you realize when we get to heaven, we're going to see fire? Do you realize in the lake of fire, the eternal of hell and death, they will never see fire? The place is called darkness. Even though it's called the lake of fire, there's no orange, there's no red, and there's no yellow. It's dark. There's no light. And while yet we speak about hell fire, I don't like hell fire, we're going to see fire in New Jerusalem at the throne of God. How do you like that one? There it is. Something about the cherubim. They're quite uh, beings to study in your Bible. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. And with the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. That cloud keeps showing up. God's majesty. That cloud's a protection. God told Moses, if you're to see my faith, you're dead. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim. That's what Moses speaks about. The glory of the Lord. And stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud. And the cloud was filled with the brightness, light, of the Lord's glory. The sound of cherubim's wings was, was heard even to the outer court. As the voice of the mighty God went 
when he speaketh. So these cherubims, they have wings. Angels do not. And they make a sound with their wings. They have a holy voice according to Revelation chapter 4. So imagine them speaking holy, holy, holy. And as their wings flap, make a sound. And Ezekiel doesn't record it, but I wonder if they're saying holy, holy, holy. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheel, from between the cherubim. Then he went in and stood beside the wheel. We read about that earlier. The one cherubim stretched forth his hand between the cherubim unto the fire that was between the cherubim, took thereof and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. Now he grabs it, he doesn't go, ooh, ooh. it wasn't a hot potato game, he just grabs a hot piece of coal. Do you know what the devil's imitation of this is? Walking on fire. And isn't that going to be mentioned in Ezekiel 20? Some, somewhere it talks about the stones of fire. See, Satan has everything that imitates God. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wing. You can almost see where, the, where they get the angels, but angels are different. When I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherubim, and another wheel by another cherubim. And the appearance of the wheels was as the color of barrel stone. Again, when you look that up, it says multiple colors. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness. So in other words, they looked alike, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel, a rotary kind of thing. I can't explain it. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went. I have no idea. But to the place whither the head looked, they followed. They followed it and turned not as they went. Again, what head? They had four heads, the Bible says. And their whole body and their backs, they got backs. And their hands and their wings and their wheels were full of eyes round about. Even the wheels that had four, even the wheels that they four had. These things are just loaded with eyeballs or eyes. Makes even more. Ooh, I don't know. John doesn't describe them as all eyes. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. Okay, and everyone had four faces. Most Christians have two faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. In chapter one, verse ten, it said ox. So what's a cherub? It's an ox. Does an ox look like a baby? Does a baby look like an ox? Ezekiel ten. 14, Ezekiel 1, 10. And why do you got a picture of cherubim, two little fat babies with wings? You can take those pictures, those imagery that we've been studying so far in Ezekiel, you can throw them into the fire. They're wrong. The Bible will correct you. A cherub looks like an ox. Now, if you have a baby that looks like an ox, I feel sorry for you. The second face was the face of a man. The third, the face of a lion. The fourth, the face of an eagle. And these match 1, 10. Daniel 7, 4, and Revelation 4, 7. They match. The cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creatures that I saw by the river Shabar. Chapter 1. So he's just saying, listen, this, this is the same one. I may have said cherub, I may have said ox. That's what it means. The Bible corrects itself. The Bible tells you definitions by itself. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with the passage. You just got more detail. And when the cherubims went... The wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, so they can fly by their wings. The same wheels also turned not from beside them. Now I would assume when they go to fly, these wheels are spinning. That's what it means. And when they stood, these stood. I think the wheels. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. 
the Holy Spirit. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the servants. God leaves the house. And when Jesus leaves the temple the last time, they head him out to Calvary's hill. I believe the last time is when he went in there beating everybody down and tipping all the tables over. And the cherubims lifted up their wings. By the way, you know, it said in the court where these were. Usually in the court of a church is where all the business cassette tapes and CDs and books are sold. The glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them. Everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house. These were the guys that had their backs turned from God looking at the sun rising. I don't know if these guys ever saw this. But Ezekiel did. I know a little girl that was dead and everybody mocked Jesus. He's all right, you stay out here. Uh, Peter, James, John, mother, father, yes, come with me. And I believe that's what he said, Tabitha or something like that, the Kumari. And the girl arose, and, so, and they, four, five, six people, seven, counting the girl, saw the resurrection of Jesus. I saw the resurrection of the girl, and no one else did. There was times that Paul says, I saw the heavenly vision on the road to Damascus, and the people with him heard a sound, but they, they didn't see nothing. And you find that quite often. A voice spoke to Jesus, and the people said it thundered. It's quite possible this happened between for the people in verse no, chapter number 8, verse 16, they don't even see nothing. You know, you can preach to people on the street. You can witness to them knocking at their door. You can sit down with the Bible with them. And you can explain the glory of God as you have never felt it before in your life. And they're going to look at you like, huh? Because they have no glory of God. They're not doing what God has told them to do. This is the living creatures that I saw under the God of Israel by the river Shebar. And I knew that they were the cherubim. Chapter 1. So what did Ezekiel said? They are definitely, for sure, the cherubims. And that little fat little baby. Everyone had four faces apiece. And everyone had four wings. And the likeness of the hands of man was under their wings. They had hands like a man. It's funny how they draw little hands on T-Rex. Like, what could he do with those little hands? And yet, T-Rex is a reptile. T-Rex is a reptile, and he has hands of man. Kind of interesting, isn't it? And the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river Shebar. Shebar, however you want to call it. And I already told you what it looked like twice. And the parents and themselves, they went every one straight forth. What a way to end the chapter. Amongst destruction. Amongst sin, amongst desolation, amongst judgment, Ezekiel takes us and shows us the glory of God. And not only the glory of God, but those that attend to God. When you get to heaven, you're going to see these creatures. They're going to be around the throne. They're going to speak, John says. They're going to be wonderful creatures. Right in the middle of all this, here, Ezekiel lays this out for us. Just to, you know what? It's all about God. The cherubim are not worried. God is not worried. It's all about God. 